Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, today we commemorate the life and ministry of St. Gregory the Great. Uh, Gregory uh, lived in the latter part of the uh, 6th century and was a, a Benedictine who was chosen to lead the church. Um, he is noted for uh, his reforms in the church, particularly with liturgy. And so when we hear Gregorian chant, he is the one who introduced that into the liturgical life of the church. Uh, he was also noted for uh, his um, writings in theology, uh, but, also, uh, and, but also in uh, moral uh, uh, situations too. And because of those writings, he was declared a doctor of the church, and he's considered to be one of the four great uh, doctors of the church in the Latin church. And so we call to mind our sins, seeking the Lord's forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, through the intercession of Pope St. Gregory, endow, we pray, with a spirit of wisdom, those to whom you have given authority to govern, that the flourishing of the holy flock may become the eternal joy of the shepherds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are in vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you. Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all belong to you, and to you Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the Lord belongs the earth, and all that fills it. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Who can ascend to the mountains of the Lord? Or who may stand in this holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior, such as the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Come after me, says the Lord, 
and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were tearing they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of the fish they had made seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In her book, I Wouldn't Take Nothing for My Journey Now, Maya Angelou recalls her rediscovering God. And she writes, In my 20s in San Francisco, I became a sophisticated and an acting agnostic. It wasn't that I stopped believing in God. It's just that God didn't seem to be around the neighborhoods I frequented. One day, my voice teacher asked me to read a passage from a book, a section which ended with these words, God loves me. I said it again and closed the book. And my teacher said, read it again. I pointedly opened the book and I sarcastically read, God loves me. He said, read it again. After about the seventh repetition, I began to sense that there might be truth in the statement that there was a possibility that God really did love me, me, Maya Angelou. I suddenly began to cry at the gladness of it all. I knew that if God loved me, then I could do wonderful things. I could try great things, learn anything, achieve anything, for what could stand against me and God? That knowledge humbles me, melts my bones, closes my ears, and makes my teeth rock loosely in my gums. And it also liberates me. I think many of us suffer from an inferiority complex when it comes to God. We're neither good enough nor wise enough in the ways of church to consider ourselves religious. And like Simon Peter, we shy away from God because we can't imagine God loving sinful, less than holy us. But that is exactly the mystery of God, that God loves despite ourselves. Thomas Merton once observed that the root of Christian love is not the will to love, 
but the faith that one is loved by God, irrespective of one's worth. And so in some way today, God will make God's self known to us, probably in a small, simple way that we barely notice. But I encourage you to notice and welcome that moment, not with fear or cynicism, but with joy. We now give voice to those many concerns and intentions as we respond. Lord, hear our prayer. For our holy church, may the Lord protect her from all evil and sanctify her for his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in public, corporate, and civic leadership, may the Lord guide their hearts and mind in the ways of charity and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those oppressed by poverty, illness, depression, or hopelessness, may the Lord be their sustenance and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, through the intercession of St. Gregory the Great, may we grow, continue to grow, in holiness and virtue. Let us pray to the Lord. For the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, may they eternally rejoice in his presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jeff Kramer, for whom this Mass is offered, and those intentions we lift up in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. And we make all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, fruit to the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice we present in celebration of St. Gregory may be for our good, since through its offering, you have loosed the offenses of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For as on the festival of St. Gregory the Great, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you forever. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, you are indeed holy. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, your people spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, Saint Gregory the Great, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith and courage of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should, should enter under my roof, roof but only say, say the word, word and, and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you have fed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of St. Gregory, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a good day, everybody.